Genesis 3, verse 9. Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? A man's location determines his allocation. A man's location determines his allocation. If you want God to do things for you, if you want God to promote you, if you want God to take you to the next level, if you want God to, 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 to give you a divine direction, then you need to be strategically positioned. You can't walk with God holding hands with the devil. If you want to walk to the next level of glory, if you want your mind to be expanded, then you need to, to be rightly pos positioned. Ignorance and negligence creates the atmosphere for failure and defeat. God had called Adam and given him a divine mandate to have dominion over the birds of the air, dominion over the earth, dominion over the sea, dominion over every creeping thing. That is the power of dominion. I want you to know that God has given you the power of dominion. To have dominion over every spectrum, in every spectrum of life. You are called to be a conqueror. You are called to be a champion. You are called to be an ambassador. You are called to be the light. You are called to be a king. You are called to have complete dominion. How come Christians are still walking in defeat? How come Christians are still doing things in an unprofitable manner? How come Christians are still doing things that are not profitable? It's because we are not rightly positioned. If you want to see breakthroughs, if you want to see victory, if you want to see success, then you need to be, the, be at the place that God wants you to be. Where are you? Because there is a place where silver is refined. There is a place where champions are raised. There is a place where kings are raised. There is a place where priests are raised. There is a place where, where men and women who walk in the power of God are raised. You, can't, you, you, you don't aspire to be a champion and you are, you are, you are walking and having fellowship with unprodu unproductive people and, and doing unproductive things. We need a change, a radical change. We need a radical change that can bring the radical transformation. If you want to do things in God's way, then you must be at God, the place that God wants you to be. Where is God's best for you? Where, where, you, 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 you need to understand God's timing in every area of your life, in every stage, at every stage of your life, as you walk with God. You need to understand where God wants you to be. The Bible says, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And the steps of the righteous is like shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. That means that today is supposed, supposed to be better than where you were. Tell someone, say, this is our time. We're making a positive change. We want to take the, 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 our faith to the next level of glory. After failing to exercise dominion mandate, Adam blamed God and blamed his wife for his failure. It's so easy to put the responsibility on someone and say, I, I didn't do well in school because my professor was such a bad professor. What a logical argument. I, I, I failed in my relationship because the guy was such a nasty guy. He was a monster. What a logical explanation. I failed in school because the, 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 the professor looked at me and, and, and didn't give me the grades. I believe in the strongest terms that every man is accountable for his life and for the things that he does. If darkness is covering your life, it's because you have refused to shine as light. And because you've empowered darkness to have dominion over you. I refuse to die a failure when God called me to reign as a king. I refuse to die before my time when God's given me the mandate for long life and to do great exploits. I refuse not to be a light in a dark world. You need to exercise your choice and be a fighter and change your destiny. God gave him a place. He gave him the authority to reign as a king. When you lose it and you start losing control over your mind, you're losing control over your business, and losing control over your, your family, don't blame people, blame yourself. Because you have the mandate to reign. If you start losing it, 
that means something is not just right. He blamed God for the woman that God gave to him. The, the woman you gave to me. So easy. If my marriage, is, if, if my marriage fails, it's because I have refused to exercise authority. In everything that God gives, every perfect thing, gift that God gives to you, comes with a challenge. The Bible says we must be true, we must enter the kingdom through trials and tribulation. Take the kingdom of God. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He knows. That we're going to tread, contend with scorpions and lions, contend with snakes and, and scorpions. He knows that we're going to face principalities and powers. He knows we're going to fight demons. But he says, behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Is there someone in this place ready for a desperate change? You have the power to make a difference. You have the power to have the victory. You have the power to be the head and not the tail. You have the power to turn your business around. You have the power to turn your health around. You have the power to influence this nation positively. You have the power to make a difference in this nation. Tell your neighbor, say, this is our time. We are stepping into power. We are stepping into glory. We are stepping into honor. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. So Adam did not exercise dominion. He left his wife to run wild. Dominion starts at home. But dominion is not an exercise of control. God did not say we should dominate another person's spirit. God says we should dominate the works of creation. But he didn't say we should dominate people and put them down. The human spirit cannot be manipulated and dominated by any other spirit. Because the human spirit was made in the image of God. That's why when God wants to do things with us, he, 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 he makes appeal to our free will. That's why we have the power to reject him or to accept him. When he does things, he says, choose. So if you, are a, you have a wife or a husband, and all you do is to manipulate them and threatening the, uh, and, and, and threaten them, <laughs> then you are just exercising witchcraft of the highest order. I've always believed that if the ship is a ship that God's called to give to you, even if you whisper, they'll hear your voice. But if they never hear your voice, <laughs> then that is the wrong place for you to be. The sheep will always hear the master's voice. But if the sheep can't hear your voice, and you keep calling and calling, they are running all over the place, then know, know that something is wrong. They are goats, and you cannot bring them. If you bring goats among sheep, I tell you there's going to be confusion. We need to walk in faith. We need to walk in the spirit. We need to shed every walk of darkness. Take away the flesh. Take away emotions. Take away dead things. Because the time is fast spent and Jesus is coming soon. He's coming for a glorious church. He's coming for a great church. He's coming for a church that knows their God. The Bible says those who know their God shall be strong and they shall do great exploits. Do you imagine what's going to happen if everyone is walking in the power of God, walking in the spirit of God? We we will move like an army, unstoppable army. We will bring light to the whole of Republic of the Philippines. We will make light shine in Come on in. We will make light shine in Quezon City. We will make light shine in the whole nation. And they will know that Jesus is in their midst. I want to see revival in my lifetime. I don't want to talk about revival. I want to do revival. I want to see revival. I want to see God move like never before in this nation. I want to see God move in the north, in the west, in the 
the south in all spectrum of life. I want to see changes in every human institution. I want to see changes in the political arena. I want to see changes in the economic arena. I want to see changes in the, in the, among the youth. I want to see changes in the world of technology, education, in every pillar of society. Is there someone in this place ready for that change? Tell your neighbor, say, this is our time. We have to be careful how we judge people. We have to be careful how we reach conclusions, wild conclusions. The Bible says, let nothing be judged before it's time. Hallelujah. Associate with people who can enhance your destiny. A tree grows best where it's originally planted. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Psalm 1 verse 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Eve ought to have known better. She decided to fellowship with the enemy. And the enemy, when he speaks, lie is his natural language. The friends you keep can free Freeze or frustrate your destiny. The friends you keep can free, freeze or frustrate your destiny. There are some friends that you move with and you just begin to do things. The Bible says iron, iron sharpened iron. There are some friends you move with, you just go into a state of spiritual coma, economic coma. Everything is frozen. Because they carry a spirit. And you begin to go around the same circle. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be now and forever. 2001, 2002. And you're still doing the same old thing. And there are some friends you meet. They will just destroy your destiny. But, but, but is it only friends? Even your parents, if they are not walking the godly path, Jonathan was a man that God loved. And God told Jonathan, Jonathan knew that David was going to be the next king. And he told David, David, I'm going to serve with you as your number two. David had no problem. But Jonathan, my father, my father, you know, I cannot be. And Jonathan died, lost his life because of sentiment. This is what happens when you Take sentiment over purpose. No sentiment is going to derail my destiny. No sentiment is going to derail my purpose. No sentiment is going to derail me from the path of righteousness. Sometimes we need to be act, we need to be decisive. We, we need to stand for what we believe. We can argue our preferences. We can argue our preferences, but we cannot argue our convictions. We must have our convictions. The Bible says it is better to obey God rather than men. Choose destiny and purpose over sentiment. Too much attachment to natural things, too much attachment to the natural will deny you your spiritual inheritance. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 4, 1 to 2, after these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I'll show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. The reason why some of us are still where we are is because we can't see the things that God wants us to see. If God wants to show you things, if God wants to take your business to the next level, he takes you from where you are to the place that he has ordained for you. There is a place that God has ordained for you in this season, in this, at this season of your life. There is a place that God has ordained for you. And if God opens the door, the door is not going to be permanent. When God calls, how do we respond? Immediately. If he calls, how do you respond now? Nah. 
Because if you do not respond, you may lose your blessing. Your blessings are not earthbound. They are, they, 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 are, they are assessed in the spirit realm. So if you want to make impact, before anything happens in the natural, it must be determined in the supernatural. That's why the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in, in the heavenly places in Christ. Where do you have your spiritual blessings? It's in the heavenly places. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. You know, God does not want us to be stagnant. That's why he told Moses in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. He said, you have been on this mountain for too long. It's time to move. Tell your neighbor, say move. The journey of destiny begins with the past, followed by the present, then subsequently the future. When God called Abraham, he gave an instruction. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 3, now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. If God wants to make you, your name great, then there are some sacrifices that you have to make. If you can't make sacrifice, then you are not ready to assess God's blessing. Love is nothing without sacrifice. That's why the Bible says in the book of John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave. If the guy says he loves you and he's not ready to sacrifice anything for you, then that's not love. That's trash. Love involves sacrifice. And you know, such a gentle God, God is in his nature. God's nature is, in, God's nature is the nature of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says the gift, the fruit of the Spirit, one of the fruit is gentleness. So God is gentle. He doesn't force you to have things. He gives you an option. So that means if you are sick, God is not going to heal you unless you desire healing. If you want deliverance, God is not going to deliver you unless you desire deliverance. The reason why some of you are where you are and it looks as if God is doing nothing is because God respects your fundamental free will. He's the author of free will. He will never change what you're comfortable with. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 27 verse 40, By your sword you shall live. That was a bad curse. By your sword you shall live and you shall serve your brother and it shall come to pass, when you become restless, that you shall break his yoke from your neck. It is restlessness that brings a change. I came to church today restless. Restless for a positive change for this local assembly. We must be restless. Until we become restless, then nothing can be done. The greatest revolutions that ever took place, took place as a result of people who said, no, 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 no. We've, we've been like this for too long. We need a change. Tell your neighbor, say, be restless. So the journey of destiny begins with the past, the present, and future. You know, God gave me this wisdom. He said, you need obedience to leave the past, faith to confront the present, and vision to embrace the future. What do you need to confront the past? What do you need to leave the past? Obedience. How do you confront the present? Faith. How do you embrace the future? Vision. Tell your neighbor, do you have vision? 
The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 119, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Paul had this to say in the book of Philippians 3, 13 to 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The problem is some of you, you can't just let go of the past. Say, move on. Dream big and enlarge your territory. Some of your territory is too small. Second Kings chapter 6, 1 to 2. And the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please, let us go to the Jordan and let, us, and let every man take a bean from there. And let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, Go. If your territory is too small, God wants you to enlarge your territory. Say, grow up. How do you feel if you have a boy? The boy is three years old. 20 years, it's been like that. You say something, is just not right. Some of you are like that. You've been a grade two teacher for 10 years, for 15 years. You love the small salary and you say, be thankful for small things. But bless God for bigger things. You understand? The small is the process towards the big. You can't settle for small things. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 54 verse 2, Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Say, spare not. Like Adam, we can lose the power of dominion and productivity if we live in rebellion. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 14, 30, 34, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 16, 25, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Proverbs 21, 16. A man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the dead. When the devil wants to truncate your destiny, he deceives you. The serpent knew that to derail the destiny of Adam and Eve, he cannot speak the truth, so he deceived. Be wary of anybody who questions God's the validity of God's prophetic word for your life and destiny. Be wary. Because the person cannot know better than you. Be wary of people who try to manipulate God's word because they want you to do the things they want you to do. So if the devil wants us to, to wander away from the truth, he deceives us. Ephesians 5, 6 to 11 says, let no one deceive you with empty words. But because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. There are certain things if you don't expose, they'll derail your destiny. Positive change is certain when we learn from past mistakes and embrace the future by faith as we make the right choices today. Do you know the story of the prodigal son? Do you know the story of the prodigal son? Change is in three phases. It starts from the mind. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Every man is a product of his, dominant, his most dominant thought. 
the prodigal son came to himself. He settled it in his mind. He said, I need to go back to my father's house. Then he confessed what he believed. And he took the step of faith. Faith without works is dead. So it starts with the right mindset, the right confession, and the right action. That is how you embrace change. Luke chapter 15, 17 to 20. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's higher servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father's, to my father. And I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The Bible says in Isaiah 118, come, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Joel 314, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Ephesians 5, 15 to 16, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And people can judge you based on all the wrong things you've done because of your prodigal actions. But I realize that God is a God of grace. And he's the one that can redeem the time. When Samson messed up his destiny, Samson was called to be a judge. 20 years, Samson judged Israel, and it was glaring that Samson was going to die a failure. Ah. Samson was not concerned about himself again. He said, Lord, give me one more time. Say, one more time. He said, just one more time. I know I messed up big time. I know, I know. Don't tell me about Delilah. Don't tell me I was Delilah's best friend, but don't tell me about that. But give me one more time. One more time. Yes, the enemy took away Samson's vision. So he didn't have any dream again. They said, we have killed his dream. But thank God for grace. He told the small boy, just lean on me. Take me to the, to, the, to the post. Take me to the post. And the Bible says with all his strength, he pushed against the pillar. And the roof came down and killed the entire machinery of government. No leader has ever crushed a nation like that. He killed their president, their congressmen, their legislators, Everything the Bible says, and all those that something killed in one day put together were more than those he killed in his entire 20 years of leadership. Say glory be to God. In one day, God can redeem your 20 years of mistakes. Let me prove it to you. When the prodigal son came to himself, he knew what he had done did not qualify him to be a son. But he made the right step as he stepped towards the father. He was the one that messed up. He was the one that committed the sin. He was the one that wasted everything. But what did the father do? The father was the one that ran towards the prodigal son. I don't care how long you have been lost in your sin. I don't care how long you have been lost in your compromise. If you make the right step today, before you even take the next two, three steps, you will see the favor of God locating you. Favor will run towards you. Healing will run towards you. Mercy will run towards you. Promotion will run towards you. Because our God is a God of grace. He's a God of a second 
second chance. Why don't you stand to your feet and just bless his holy name? Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. You may not be where God wants you to be, but God will take you by his mercy and by his grace to the place that he has ordained for you.